So uh, without further ado, uh, let's get into our first segment, which is designing with Illustrator uh, for your laser cutter. I'm just going to watch it. OK. So uh, here we are. We have a Illustrator new uh, tab open. Uh, now what I've done, and this is a, a kind of good uh, practice to get into, um, my work area is 20 by 12 because that's the size that's awesome. of my laser. So that's a good way to kind of keep track of how much uh, material you're using. Now what you can do is you can have multiple work areas. You can have with multiple 20 by 12 areas so you can kind of see how much uh, material you need to use. Uh, so you can set up your work area either by the size of your work bed or by the size of material you'll be cutting on. But now, how, do you, how do you scale it? Just down there? Oh yeah, you can just, uh, in Illustrator, you just grab this uh, uh, little uh, tool right here. It's called the Artboard Tool. And then you can either uh, scale it by dragging the corner or you can type it up in the top here um, in the size you want to use. So the first thing we wanted to show you is just some basic uh, functions uh, with this uh, uh, program. Now, the two things we use the most is the image trace uh, function and the uh, pathfinder. Now, pathfinder will show you first, uh, let's say you're going to design a uh, personalized wrench. Uh, I don't know why you need a wooden or an acrylic wrench, but that's just a good right. shape. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with a uh, rectangle, right? Now, what's great is it doesn't really matter size right now. We just need it to kind of get a good shape, and then we can scale it to how big uh, that we need it. Uh, so this will be like the handle. Uh, now, Thank you for letting me know that. <laughs> if there's any question. Now, that <laughs> probably looks just a little thick for a wrench handle. Um, we're just going to make that uh, half as wide. All right, now the, this is kind of where it gets interesting. Now we're going to take the uh, ellipse tool, uh, and uh, another little trick is if you want the center of your object to be where your cursor is, you can hold Shift and Option, and you'll actually draw from where your cursor is. So we'll take um, one of these down at this end, and then um, we're actually going to put one of these on each end. So I'm just going to copy and paste this and throw it down here. Now, Basically, what I have here is three separate objects, right? And because of the locking I have on, it's going to just place itself, intersect it perfectly there. Now, I'm going to select these three objects. Now, technically, these are three different compound objects. But by using the Pathfinder up here, I'm going to press this Unite uh, tool right here. And that's going to combine all three of those things together. Now, if you didn't do that, it would have cut five pieces, right? Absolutely. And that's kind of the thing you have to remember when you're designing with Illustrator is you really want simple uh, compound paths. You don't want to mm -hmm. layer a bunch of things together and group them. You really want to um, combine the object and make the object uh, a single path. It's a lot different than when you're designing for print. When you don't have to worry about layers, you can hide things. Right? Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> but we'll talk about that in just a second with, uh, with the rasterization. No, but in, in the it's OK. But yeah, that's a really good point. Uh, so now we want to take away uh, the center of that so we can use like the hex uh, part of a lock, right? So we just use the polygon tool. We're going to pick six sides, and there is a polygon. I should look at my screen instead of the screen up there where I'm projecting. This is a little hard. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm going to place this right here in the center. Now you're probably wondering, well, you added those shapes together. How do you take them apart? Well, real simply, uh, what you'll do is uh, once you have that just where you need it, uh, you'll select those two objects. And then the same in the Pathfinder, you'll use the next tool over, which is the minus the front tool. Now, you can also minus the back if they're layered differently. But basically, you want to use that minus tool to separate. Now, you'll notice that this is all one uh, compound path. Uh, now, you have a, the closed section of your wrench down there. And then what we'll do is we'll take this. Um, oh, you're going to do an open end close. Uh, open end on this end. Yeah, pretty That's fancy. Cool. So we'll take this down here. And we'll put it on here. And technically, I think wrenches kind of look like that when you do open end. And yeah, so I think if you extend the guy a bit. Um, I just don't want to lose the um, angle of that back side of it. Oh, OK. So he's just real strong. Just yeah, super strong one. I get what you're saying. So it's not as fat on the back. Yeah. Yeah. Not a tool designer, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, now, this uh, bad boy has a couple things uh, that we can do to kind of just make it a little smoother. Now, I'm going to use the sub select tool and grab these nodes in the middle. And I'm just going to give that just a little bit of a rounded shape there on that. And look at that. We got ourselves a little wrench we designed right here in Illustrator, a compound path. Um, this will be read really well uh, in RE3 and be really, really easy to use. Now, if we're going to engrave this, let's say we're going to do this for a logo, and we wanted to put some text down here real quick. We said, uh, walkers 
tool shed and we wanted to show everyone whose tool shed this is now it's tool with tools <laughs> exactly now <laughs> walker's tool shed that's a font now but what we want to do is we want to right click on this and we actually want to create outlines now what that's going to do is turn all those uh, pieces of text actually into vector lines rather than uh, text data. So that's going to be another thing that's going to help you out in Illustrator, but now engraving. So technically right now, if we were to drag just this into um, Illustrator, uh, what it would do is it would, or into RE3, excuse me, it would just engrave the black areas, right? Yeah, so it's going to engrave the wrench in with the text. Absolutely. So let's say you didn't want the wrench to be engraved, you just wanted the wrench to be cut out and the tool, uh, Walker's tool should to be engraved. Well, what we typically do is, is we have a bit of rules with our colored lines. So red for me when I design is always cut. So red is the cut line. Now I'm just gonna, just cause I got a little OCD on sizing and spacing, we're gonna give that just a little bit of an adjustment, maybe not that big of an adjustment, just so it looks a little, clean. a little clean. Okay, so with the red line now, and actually, if you want to make sure this, if you're going to engrave this, you can actually make this line yellow, which when you drag that into RE3, RE3's uh, black and white threshold won't pick up the yellow line. It'll just pick up the black letters, which will enable you to engrave even better. Now, the other thing you can keep in mind, if you have a black rectangle, and we'll just make this one real quick. Oops, that's the... F boom. Now, with this, we're going to send this all the way to the back. If we drag this on top of this, uh -oh. now we got some things going on. Now, mm -hmm. if we engrave this, the machine's not gonna read that there's a full black box and then a white thing. It's gonna see all of this all at once. So when you're engraving something like this, you actually will have the, this will, would look really cool, I think. You would have the um, wrench sticking out and then the yeah. letters engraved. Um, this is a cool way to do uh, what a lot of people call 3D engraving or <coughs> relief engraving. Where That's you, technically a high relief, right? Yeah, high relief. That's uh, exactly how we would call it. Uh, sometimes it's referred to in forums as uh, more of a 3D thing. Uh, the way you can play with this is you can start using like different colors and shades of gray to have different levels uh, be engraved as you go. Hey everyone. Thanks for watching. If you like those videos, please subscribe. We got more videos in the over here. <laughs>